any person. I can't get this on, but I can hold it for you. Yeah. You're, it's actually you need a safety down. pin? It's upside down? Somebody put this no. one on. No, no, no. no. Here Wait. You go. What do you mean it's upside down? It goes like this. Okay. It does not go like this, or does it go? It goes like that. Oh, and Resby, where are you? Right here. Here's for you. <laughs> oh, what did Christian get? I didn't get one yet. I have the... I'll film. So, you can see that all these things are, are pillows, right? Mm. They're just oddly shaped pillows. Um, although, interestingly, that one's actually shaped a lot like one of those breastfeeding pillows. <laughs> um, but breast look at the difference between... Catherine, step out for a sec. So awesome. Catherine is referring to... is wearing what we might call a, a bolster or a hip uh, crescent. Um, Alyssa is actually wearing one that's similar, but you can see that Alyssa's is just in the back, comes a little bit around to the sides. Catherine's comes all the way to the front. Mm -hmm. Take a look at Connie's. Connie's is really similar. What difference do you see there? Um, uh, in terms of the the pad itself, it seems to be equal all the way around. It also doesn't taper in the front, so it yeah. just stops. Yeah, it just yeah. stops. Way to go here, here. And then take a look at Resmine's. <laughs> She's got shelves, right? Yeah, <laughs> sell stuff off of that. She's got armrests. And actually, people did sell things off. You could of put them. like a cup holder in there. And then take a look at. This one right like, here. T-shirt with the bustle. It's completely in the back. Um, now, interestingly, so they're all different silhouettes to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, Alyssa made an interesting comment about Connie's. Can you step back out here for a sec? Yeah. Alyssa, what was the first comment you made about Connie's? Connie's actually wearing hers down on the hip as opposed to on the waist. Yeah. Take a look at the difference between that and that. Oh, totally. So here we are again with pasta, right? All of these things are the exact same thing, but we've just manipulated the variables a little bit. And one of those variables, clearly those variables are the shape of the thing and the overall way that it distorts the hips. But some of it is also the place in which it's worn. Is that gonna create the same silhouette as that, as that? You know, it's the difference between mom jeans versus, like, sexy jeans right now, right? Um, so we can start to play around with all of that. The thing that's really interesting is, in a way, the first thing we're starting to do with the smaller versions is we're just reshaping the hips, right? But then take a look at Razmeen's. Is hers just, is the goal of hers just to reshape the hips? No, no. What's the, what's the goal of hers? Connie starts to have a similar goal, and yours starts to have a similar goal as well. What are we starting to do? Extend, extend yeah. the skirt out. Exactly. We're extending the skirt horizontally, which means that we're defying gravity. We're trying to force the fabric to do this before it does this. Sound familiar to anybody? Mm -hmm. Where else on the body have we done that kind of thing? Sleeves. Exactly. The sleeves are supposed to go whoosh, whoosh. Um, which is very interesting because in a way we can start to think about sleeves and skirts in a very similar manner. They're just different in terms of proportion, but otherwise they have a lot of this, a lot of similar uh, properties to them. Like shoulder pads. Yeah. What's the biggest problem with trying to defy gravity here with Razmines in particular? Weight. Yes. Weight. What do you mean by that? It would be incredibly heavy. Well, the fabric of the dress is going to pull that down. It doesn't have a lot of structure. Yeah. So if the fabric of the dress is going to start making it do this, what does Razmine have to do to keep it from doing that? Stand very still. That's part of it. <laughs> and this is part of the reason, like if you're mm -hmm. in the BFA performance track, or even if you're not, you know, Tammy is such a proponent of period styles and movement yeah. because the way that all of um, the way that all of this affects the body and, you know, there's a reason that the minuet is danced like this. Yeah. Because you can't lift your arm any higher than that. You can't bend. You can't bend over at the waist. You and you can't, can't take your any arm. steps larger than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so all of these things start to impact the way that the body moved as well. So what happens, so what does Razmine have to do 
if she's going to put a petticoat and a skirt over top of this, it's going to automatically start to pull it down. Um, <clears throat> what she have to do to keep it from sagging? Can you do anything with these that's similar to like boning in a corset where you add some non-fabric Let's structure? stick with rasmines okay. before we get there because this one is totally soft. It doesn't have any kind of hard structure to it. Say it again. Tie it really tight. Tie it really, really tightly. That's the first thing. And this is one of those weird moments that we have for theater because say for example in Tartuffe, we need to make things that tight to be able to start to create the period silhouette. But we start to get a real contradiction, partially by what the director or the choreographer um, or the playwright may have asked the body to do inside the clothing. Mm. Um, the other part of that is your contemporary bodies are not accustomed to this. And so suddenly you shock it by turning a waist making all of the internal, internal organs compressed at a waist that tight. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's like, well, you're trying to kill me. Yeah. So how do we address that kind of situation? Well, for us, Tammy always told us, you know, make sure you breathe out when you're getting laced up um, so that when you're laced in, it's not to your But I want to stick point. with skirts and bustles for a minute. And I pointed at you because you actually already said it. What do we do when that starts to become an issue? We want to defy gravity but we don't want to try and kill ourselves at the same time. Was that when you had the boning? That's when we start working with other ways to be able to defeat gravity. Let's take a look back here. Take a look at this. Oh. What do you see? <laughs> Touch it. What do you feel? Boning. PVC pipes. It's actually <laughs> copper rod. Oh, shit. oh no, you're right. It is PVC. We changed it two years ago. And what else do you see? It's very stiff. Very structured. This is something that's going to take a lot to fall off. What do you a get? A string. Oh, you get a little, yeah, the it's a little hoop. The thing that's interesting is all you've got here is muslin, a drawstring, and a hula hoop. P PVC rod, a hula hoop. That's <laughs> all it is. So how's the weight differential? It's significantly, significantly different. Um, this is actually... Um, to be able to create a farthingale shape for Queen Elizabeth, and so that was oh, this kind of shelf. Um, you know, there would need to be some sort of pad underneath it, quite likely, depending upon how far it extends, but you don't need a giant pad like that right there. Take a look at this right here. Oh, it's so What's cute. this, Connie? Take that off. Oh, okay. They look like torture devices. <laughs> they could be. Yeah. In some world. Turn around. Okay. Grab that. Oh, weird. <laughs> Pull it forward. <clears throat> uh, rotate so everybody can see. What have you got now? What's this? A great bouncy butt. She kind of looks like a baby carriage. I know. She does kind of look like a pram, <laughs> it's true. Like but what is this called, Connie? In particular, I gave it to you for a reason. Bustle. This is an actual bustle. So <clears throat> the bustle comes in later in history because the bustle is so much more pronounced. Um, and to be able to def defy gravity and get it to protrude out away from the waist, you start using things like boning as opposed to just using soft padding. Could one of the like... things that's really interesting about this one, she's, she's, done, she's doing a really good job of holding it up flat against her butt. Look at what the bustle does it right now. Up. Yeah. It kind of sticks up, doesn't it? Is that the good news or the bad news? Is that what's that's what happening? it's supposed to do. The fabric's going to pull down, right? Exactly. It's mm -hmm. actually the good news because we're going to start layering weight on top of it and it's going to start doing that. Smarty pants. Um, <clears throat> I wish, I, for some reason, we don't have it's a set of like pants in here. It's like you put a sandwich in there or something. <laughs> it's true. You could. You can put a lot of things in there. It's like a backpack. You could like put your cell phone and a sandwich. My first husband always wanted me to make a pair of panniers. He wanted me to make a dress <laughs> that was a set of panniers 
and then was treated like Venetian blinds <laughs> so that you could grab a drawstring right here and the whole skirt would come up like this and then you'd have like little pockets over here to put a cup holder or like a little snack or whatever. You know, very interesting personality. Um, why is this kind of thing really desirable for theater for us, but problematic at the same time? Well, you can sit down. Well, depends on the period. You know, sure, you can sit down in this, but what I'm talking about is the difference between this kind of structure versus one of these hard pads you've got on. Well, it it's stronger, it looks like. Sometimes. Lighter. Oh. Lighter that. weight. Way easier for a contemporary body to move in. And so one of the things we start, and I in particular, this is something I'm particularly fascinated by, start playing around with is how to be able to create these silhouettes without actually creating the hardness that goes underneath. Hmm. Let's go ahead, put your pads back over there for a sec. Mary. Yes. Please take, well actually, keep your pad. Oh, no. Mine doesn't tie though. Alright, we'll find one that ties. And then I want you to put this on over top of it. Do you want me to have a crescent or that same thing? I don't care. Je ne care pas. Je ne care pas. <laughs> Will you please write in your, on your FCQs about the day that we had class in four square feet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, first of all, I want you to watch the, the hip pad. Okay. I want you to watch where it is in relationship to her rib cage and her waist. I think it's interesting that as soon as I said that, she tightened it up. <laughs> now let's take the petticoat and put it on over top. These petticoats are sort of a generic shape that we've done, a generic form that we created uh, a while back, that have a drawstring waist on them, which is actually, they've been very helpful for us because we can use them, um, we can distribute the fabric around the body differently depending upon the show. So we're constantly pulling them out and adjusting. How does that start to change her overall silhouette, first of all? the addition of the petticoat. You can see a couple of things. First thing you can see is now we do protrude out here and then fall down. So we've completely changed the silhouette of the body, haven't we? How's your weight factor here? Mine? Well, I mean, in terms of what we've put on, not you in particular. No, I mean, well, that's what I meant if you're asking me. I mean, it's fine. It feels just like wearing just the petticoat. Give me another. I was going to say, yeah. so one of the things we've talked about is sometimes we are creating cool with the Converse our silhouette. And the shirt and the like. It's like a performance art piece right here. Yeah. By stacking <laughs> the petticoats on top of one another. So go ahead and put that one on next. Oh god, this one's already like twice as heavy. Are these made out of muslin? They are. So my petty goes fast because they're cheap. Well, they're cheap. Also, how many yards of muslin is in one of these petticoats? Lots. They're about seven yards, six yards. So now you're wearing somewhere between 10 and 15 yards of fabric. Yeah. How's it feel now? I mean, of course, the weight is all in the back. Can you turn for me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's not... I mean, it's still fine. It's still something I can move in. And what are we going to put on next? A skirt. Another petticoat. Uh, probably an underskirted and an overskirt or a skirt. It. Well, I that's the whole point. The there's, there's two things I want you to see here. First of all, stacking starts to get really, really, it can get really, really heavy, which as Mary has noted, isn't necessarily the bad news. Uh, it kind of depends. One of the things that Mary can tell you from Tartuffe um, if she were to spend the next 20 minutes in this thing, how's your crotch going to feel? It's going to be really, really fucking hot. It gets hot. super, <laughs> super hot under there. Um, and I mean, for lack no, of, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's a really absurd thing for us to discuss. But, you know, if you're having like heat stroke, what's the first thing that they do? They take off your pants. And they put like, they put cold stuff into your crotch. That's kind of where your body's temperature center is. So suddenly we're starting to fuck around with that. And when you're singing and dancing on stage, that can be a real problem. Um, 
Um, <clears throat> there's something else I want you to notice. How's our overall silhouette now? Certainly it's gotten larger with every layer we've put on, but something else has happened with every layer we've put on. It's really softened this curve with the second petticoat. So now I want you to take this off and let's put it on Rasmine. Will you untie it? <clears throat> take a look at Rasmine's right now. Shelf, all the way, right? Dive on in. Ooh. <laughs> it's a little big. It's not gonna fit overly well. Here, let's really move this so that you can move. Size. It definitely needs oh, a little bit. Oh dear lord. Square feet in a chair. <laughs> you look very fancy. Could, could you come out here? Wait, or maybe I'll come over there. Yeah. Has it softened the shelf? Did they have to? A little. Yes, yeah. but it's still coming under on the side. It's still very right listen, angle here. Listen to Rasmine's question though, Mary. Where do you put your arm? <laughs> you, you do like this. this. Yeah. Oh. You just do that. That's all you can do. <laughs> Little shelf Now, no higher than put a, now take this off, please, and let's put it on Rasmine. Please, Like my dream, just playing dress up yeah. in storage. <laughs> I almost wanted to design it so I could like lay down your bed. It's a lot of fun, but then you have to clean it all up. Yeah, that's the hard part. Though it's so much fun. Sometimes, and then other times, you're like, oh dear God, no. Put on a petticoat and put on a skirt and put on the back. Next petticoat and the next. All right, turn around. Yeah. Ooh, heavy. Oh, wow. Heavy. Mm -hmm. How much has it softened the silhouette? Oh, yeah, it's enough, but it's still, I mean, it's still not enough in my mind. Well, it's I mean, it's staying up pretty well. It actually is defying gravity pretty well. Yeah. Um, I mean, do we think that this was ever supposed to be a soft silhouette? No. No. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, there's no way that you can stick that far outside the body and have it be soft. Yeah, unless maybe she were to wear there. it down here. So let's do that for a sec. Watch this. Go ahead and hold that, please. Now let's do this. It's like carrying mice oh, over in the racks. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I know you're there, Brenda. It's actually Elisa. And Brenda. Yeah, I thought she, yeah. when she was dragging stuff, I was like, oh, dead body. Dead body. <laughs> no, yeah, if, if you're going to die anywhere in this building, this is, right. this is one of the places. Let's try that. Softer. Yeah. Yeah. It also is falling more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Again, part of to me what's interesting here is we're back to Italian food, because now we're just starting to play with variables of things, and I, I think that this is a ridiculously important lesson to learn for what we do in this class, for what we do with costumes and fashion, but also for life. I mean, it's just about getting creative with what you've got um, instead of like really l losing a lot of sleep over creating something new because it's all just a repetition of the same crap over and over again. It's just sort of the way in which you um, approach it. I want to take a look at Rasmine for a minute here because I want to talk about the anatomy of the petticoat for a minute. First of all, what sh what pattern shape do you suppose the muslin is that makes up these petticoats? Giant rectangles. They are giant rectangles, it's true. And so one of the words that you need to know, um, which you can write down later, is a word that's called, that's dirndl. D-I-R-N-D-L. Catherine has probably heard this word used in a different way in Europe. Because a dirndl actually refers to sort of ethnic wear. The way that the way that it applies in this particular uh, context is any skirt that's made of rectangles is what we refer to as a dirndl skirt. Mm -hmm. um, dirndl skirts are historically what happened all the way until the, the end of the 19th century or the 18th century until like the 1870s. So that's towards the end of the 19th century, century yeah. and towards the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, 
<clears throat> then you saw from the research we looked at, you start to get triangular shaped pieces, right? Those are what are referred to as gourd pieces. G O, they are made up of gores, G O R E S. Um, a gore is something that is triangular in shape. It doesn't have to be regularly triangle. It can be triangular. It can be irregularly triangular. It can be, one edge can be on the straight, the other can be on the bias. Um, and they're not all identical necessarily. Um, this becomes important for a couple reasons. You cannot create a silhouette post 1870 uh, with a dirndl skirt and vice versa. Um, you, you can kind of use a gore to create a dirndl silhouette, but it's really, really difficult. Um, but it can be done. Part of it is you just, you need all of this fullness around the waist. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this is actually just three widths of 45 inch wide muslin. It's probably 120 inches around. But there are a couple of other things here in the anatomy of this petticoat that I want to make sure that we discuss that are important for all of this. First of all, what's this? It's an added piece. It's a ruffle. It is an added ruffle. The ruffle itself is rectangular. There's a ruffle here. There's a ruffle here. Um, if you look at petticoats, you can see that they've got varying shaped, proportioned, and quantity of ruffles all over them. Why are ruffles so prominent on petticoats? Because certainly, if, we're, if we were to go into fashion research, a lot of these things don't have ruffles on the skirt itself. So why is it on the petticoat? Well, it's that added fullness. <clears throat> it's what like, do you mean? Well, it's just what we did on the bodice, and when you put in more yardage and you gathered it down, it created, it helped it go out into this fourth plane instead of just vertical or horizontal. It started to add full, added fullness. Rosemary, do me a favor and turn profile face that direction. Oh. Mary's right. If you take a look, you can see right here just on the front of her skirt, what starts to happen. The foundation layer of the petticoat is hanging dead straight. The ruffle, partially because it's an additional layer, partially because of the, the actual fact that it is a ruffle, that there's more fabric here than there is here, it starts to break into space further and further and further, right? So those ruffles start to become super important. If we were to dig through here, you'd find, for example, the ones that are dead flat in the front, they may have a ruffle all the way around the hem, but then have ruffle, 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 ruffle. What are those intended for? Bustles. Bustles, because we're trying to break into space that way. So it's funny to me because a ruffle is a completely, in our world, in contemporary fashion, it's just trim. It's just decorative work, right? But it actually serves a really important structural function historically. Um, I, the second thing I want you to notice is this right here. Yeah. What are those? And you can actually see that there's there's another yeah. one right there. You, there used to be another one right there. You can see there used to be another one right there. And again, if you look at these petticoats, you're going to see that they're all over them. What are those and why are they there? They do. Oh, they as do if they it, you become longer? Now, mm -hmm. the truth is, you, it, it, it does give us the ability to make them shorter and longer, but that's not structurally why they're there. That's just a coincidence. Well, it creates a horizontal stiffness. You're exactly right. You've got, the, these are tucks, not, not unlike mm -hmm. the tucks that you did in your, your tuck dart and um, uh, your sloper for whatever that project was called. Dart manipulation. Thank you, your dart manipulation one. But as Razmi noted, because it's a multiple layer of fabric, it starts to create a certain amount of stiffness. So, for example, Also, is there a horse hair encased in those? Hold on. Okay. Let's do one thing at a time. Let's go back to our silhouette diagram here. One of the differences between her and her is the fact that this is only a single petticoat, but it may have a hundred tucks around it. Historically, that's one of the things that they liked to do um, before they started introducing other uh, media into it. You could just do 
uh, you know, 50 tucks, one right next to each other, and you create a certain amount of stiffness. You know, it's not unlike taking, it's not unlike plywood in the sense that you're taking one layer of wood, stacking it, stacking it on top of the next layer, then stacking another one on top, and you start to get more and more strength. As you've noted, for theater, we use them also to be able to uh, accordion the things to make them longer and shorter. Um, <clears throat> feel this right here at the bottom of the petty, uh, the bottom of the ruffle. What do you feel right there? Does that feel similar to your tuck? Yes. So this is another instance where the multiple layers, there's a triple layer there, it takes on a, stir a certain stiffness, a certain spininess, like Rasmine was talking about. So that also helps the whole petticoat, or the thing, uh, occupy more space. It creates more volume. Take a look under here. Wow. How big of a hem does this thing have in it? Four inches. Four inches. Um, it's, it's actually a, a total of three inches. It's two inches and then one inch turned. Why does it have such a deeper hem than you would say have on your jeans or on a skirt like that? Is it heavy and it pulls it down? It, it's not that it reacts to gravity, though that's oh. not a bad point. Is it that the top layers won't stick to it? It creates it as a separate, I don't know. It, well, you're on the right track. What it does is it keeps the whole thing from collapsing underneath. Um, it keeps that it's even more rigidity around the bottom edge of the skirt so that it, because what you don't want to do is start adding volume this way and this way and then just have it do this in between the legs, right? Um, partially because you're trying to create that silhouette and partially because you're trying to walk in the thing. Um, now, every, everybody grab that hem and touch it again. Everybody touch it this time. The bottom one? Yeah, you can feel it here. You can feel it here. Is that, is that just fabric in the hem no, of the base layer? Heck no, heck no. What's there, Mary? Horse hair. There is, Are you okay? uh, historically, yeah. horse hair is a stiffening agent that, that has been used, you know, for hundreds of years. Literally, like, yanking the hair out of a horse's tail or its mane and then starting to weave it together. It's very, very coarse. And so when you go to weave it together, it creates a very stiff fabric as opposed to very soft fabric. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we take advantage of that to be able to start inserting it into locations where we want additional stiffness or additional support. Now the truth is, that's not real horsehair in there. It's a nylon version of horsehair. I want you to take a look underneath the ruffle right here. Can you see that right there? And you should find it underneath the ruffles mm -hmm. on that as well. Mm -hmm. This is what the horsehair looks like before it's been encased. Mm -hmm. Why is there horsehair in between the top of the ruffle and on the base of the petticoat? Because that's how we made it. We made the base, we put the, the horsehair on top of it, and then the ruffle was added. Why do we want horsehair there? It pushes those ruffles back out so they don't fall flat against the petticoat. One of the things you've started to experience is that your gathering can actually collapse what's underneath it. This helps fight against that. So it's not like going between your legs. Maybe that's why, like as you're walking, maybe that's kind of why they would use these too to keep it Well, kinda... it could be, um, especially depending upon what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're sitting around and posing, it's not as important, mm -hmm. but if you're working in the fields, mm -hmm. it's important. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the nylon horsehair to me is a perfect example of what we're trying to do here because we're trying to create volume but how much weight are we introducing at the same time? Not a... Very, very, very little. So it's ways of starting to create volume in space without actually using a whole lot of heavy materials. Um, that, that becomes particularly important. I, I did a production of La Traviata about six or eight years ago for Opera Colorado, we made, I made almost all of the women's clothes in the show. And the designer said, I want these 1860 dresses that are out to here, but there's no, I want them to move like ballet dancers. I want them to move like this. So what do we do? How do we do it? Because the question started to be, how do we create volume and create 
a form that isn't going to collapse underneath the weight of the skirt, but it still needs to be ridiculously lightweight. Do me a favor. Let's get into this right here. Catherine, open that and grab whatever's on top. I find the is name this where very. Can find out how the space program has contributed to costume design? No. <laughs> Wrong one. Oh. Or not. Ah, uh, no. These are called. Burns. This. Ashrooms. Oh. These are called. These are what we refer to as ashrooms, and this is. It's a term that Brenda and I and Marcus oh. made up. <laughs> what do you see inside here? Tool. You see net. What is what what does net and tool provide for us? Volume. Mm -hmm. Volume. Um, all of this stuff. Anybody ever seen a classical tutu before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are classical tutus made? It's tool that's gathered into this elastic. And it's gathered. Well, it's not an elastic, but well, millions of layers. It's a layer on top of layer. The very bottom layer is this big, and then the next layer is this big, and then the next layer is this big, and so they stack on top of each other. Guess what's inside here? All of the tool. A tutu, essentially. Mm -hmm. We start to take advantage of that. The tutu is a great example of something that defies gravity, but is very, very lightweight and airy. Oh, so Look at how much volume that creates, and this is been oh, wadded up inside angle on that one. So big. wadded up inside a bin for a while if we were to press it one of the things i want you to note is i notice i use the words net and tool feel that right there now feel the beige stuff the red stuff and the white stuff what differences do you feel between the three layers stiffness they're all different grades. Net and tool are different crunching. They have different crunchinesses about them. And they're really great because they you can use them to be able to um, create volume uh, and three-dimensionality without a whole lot of weight. Um, the labor sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit of time to make stuff like that. Um, so sometimes the labor is the downside to it, but it's not the worst news. And then I want you to note what this is. What is this? It's quilting. What is this intended for? The insides of quilts, isn't it? Actually, generally not. Oh. It's intended for like baby blankets and stuff like that. Um, what, how do we use it? It's another thing that's relatively lightweight, but look, especially when it's pleated or gathered, how much volume it starts to create overall. Um, so one of the things we are constantly doing when we are looking at the silhouette that we're trying to create is how we can recreate these things using these tools. Because the truth is, is there actually any difference between this and that right there? There's not at all. What is that? It's a big old cotton pillow with stuffing in the middle of it, right? What's the quilted fabric? Stuffing. Cotton fabric with quilted with quilted stuffing in the middle of it. What is it that makes this desirable as quilting? Why isn't it just a big pillow with stuffing inside of it? And I'll give you a hint. We discussed it on Rasmine's skirt already. Wait. No. Horizontal. Uh, I don't rounder and shape. This has a kind of gift. I'm not asking the question properly, so I'm just going to tell you the answer. <laughs> Part of what's helping us here is the actual quilting itself. Oh. All of those lines of sewing are starting to add stiffness, oh, not right. unlike the tucks we have over here. Um, but we're doing it, again, in a much more lightweight manner. I want to draw your attention to... Everybody come touch this. What is that? Silkiness. Silkiness, Connie Silky, says. Plasticiness. Plasticiness. Oh. To me, the first time I ever touched this stuff, I was like, oh, it's the stuff that diaper pants are made of. Yeah. Because it pretty much is. It's plastic. Um, it's not quite shower curtain-y, this one, but there are some that are like that. This is... Um, this is a polyester taffeta. Uh -huh. Now, first of all, what's a taffeta? It's a shiny... <clears throat> it's a 
fabric that has It's has made out of, used it. to be made out of exactly. silk. Exactly. What? This is taffeta. This, the blue is taffeta fabric. Say it again, Rasmine. It has stiffness. It, it's not going to flow. It's going to stick out. It has body. Taffeta is created by twisting the fibers uh, um, a certain way when the mm. thing is woven, and so it creates a certain kind of stiffness. Mm. You know, it's not unlike having very kinky hair versus very straight hair, mm. um, and so the kinky hair starts to occupy a little bit more volume. It's part of the reason taffeta makes that characteristic noise that nothing else does. Um, taffeta is great because it's very, very crisp. It's very, very papery. Um, and so, you know, if you go into any bridal store, that's how all of those petticoats are made of some sort of plastic taffeta and a little bit of net inside it. Um, <clears throat> why is this important? Again, what are we back to? Define gravity. Well, it's true, but simpler than that, more fundamental. Structure. Even more fundamental than that. What do I keep coming back to today? Pasta. <laughs> All we're doing, is this any different than any of the ones that you've worn? Mm. No, the only difference is it's made out of something slightly different and so it achieves a slightly different goal. In the long run, just as a, a side note, look at this. That's been done. That's a harness thing? Can you do it? Not at all. What does it do? It allows the whole thing to sit beneath me oh. in a controlled manner. Um, so it sits around the hip, but it doesn't start to move. Can I take all this right. off? Yeah, I was going to say, let's go ahead and put everything away now. <laughs> and let's go back upstairs.